Hi, it's John Steers, and you are watching Good Evening Europe. Good evening, Europe! I am here today with John Steers, who is representing Switzerland in this year's Eurovision Song Contest. Bonjour, John. Bonjour. Well, rehearsals for Eurovision are underway in a few days. How are you feeling? I'm feeling quite impassioned and, uh, of course, a little bit... Uh, I think now I'm getting a little bit scared. I'm not thinking so much about it, so that's why I'm here. And so I can maybe, like, yeah, answer questions and I'm like, okay, let's think about something else. Well, tell us about how did your stage name, Jan's Tears, come up? So um, when I was eight years old, uh, I wanted to have a passion like every of my uh, uh, classmates. I mean, I started different things like ice skating, karate, football, and I was quite good at football. <laughs> But I really had a, um, a special connection with piano. So I started piano. And uh, the year after, uh, my grandfather came for a vacation. And uh, I played, I mean, I, I was playing a song and then my, I, was, I had an electric piano. So then Can't Help Falling In Love from Elvis Presley was in the piano. So he heard that song and he was like, oh, that's my favorite song. Could you learn it for me? And I was like, okay, uh, but uh, just piano. And he was like, no, just singing too. And I was like, okay, let's try. I mean, I didn't speak uh, English, so I was like just trying to listen to and uh, learn, listen, learn, listen, learn. And, uh, and then just before he went back to Canada, I sent him the song and he started to cry. And those tears became so much uh, important for me. Uh, I mean, uh, the symbolic of those tears became really important. Um, so that I wanted to have those tears in my... Uh, in my stage name and also because I have I want him to be part of me forever also because you know he always told me I will not be here to see you a success because I will be too old and uh, I will die before and also secondly because I mean uh, for me tears have a beautiful uh, symbolic in general it's like um, you can have uh, tears of joy of sadness of uh, melancholy Yeah, of uh, nostalgia, of uh, angriness, I mean, of everything. It's a real reaction, a body's reaction, and I, I, I'm fascinated with that reaction. <laughs> so you feel kind of that he is with you also when, when you do all of this with your vision? Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, he's still alive. And so I'm so happy because he could see that, you know. As I told you, I think I had that feeling that I, make, I had to make as much as as fast as possible for him to be proud of he because at least he did i mean he made me start singing and uh, he believed a lot in me you know it's like when people says yeah you have a, a god a god a god's gift your voice is a god's gift not at all hey <laughs> if you have watched the video when i was younger you wouldn't say that at all Like, uh, it was just a lot of work, of work, 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 work. But when I'm saying work, people don't, like, expecting, okay, like, work. No, I was, I'm, I'm saying, like, when I was young, I remember I was at my aunt's place because she was a, a, an opera singer, and my grandfather asked me to learn a song. I took the CD, and I stay in that, in that uh, room for seven hours without going outside of that room, and I listened to that song from Leona Lewis, I remember, and I was like just learning that song, listening, listening, uh, and uh, and um, singing, 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 rehearsing, singing, singing, rehearsing till seven hours. And then when I was ready, I said, "Okay, I'm ready. I can sing you the song." It's like it's like I really worked a lot, and it's not a God's gift. I really think that the God's gift is inside of us. Some people have a kind of energy inside of them, and they can share it easily, and they should share it. And I have the feeling that inside of me, deeply, I, I have an emergency of feeling alive. And the way I feel alive is uh, when I'm on stage and when I'm singing. And that's why I'm doing this. It's, uh, and I think that's, um, that's the God's gift. I mean, that, that uh, willing 
of existing because I feel like I exist only in, on stage. You've been doing this for quite some years. You are 22 years old, but your career started already 10 years ago at the age of 12 when you participated in Albanians Got Talent. And yeah. you also, you were also in the Größen Schweizer Talent. <laughs> I wouldn't say 10 years because like uh, first you're you're making me older <laughs> than I am so it looks like it looks like really like I'm already old and I mean more old fashioned and it's more like I think my career started when I released my first song so maybe more two years ago something like this maybe three now three years ago but yeah anyway yeah you're right I started quite earlier in those TV shows I learned that First, concretely, what were what were cameras? What what's the relation to have with people, uh, with the audience? How to sing? Uh, how to present yourself? Uh, also, how to try to keep your stress and to work with it. Uh, and uh, it's just like I always liked to be on stage and be seen by the others. You know. Also, uh, in college, I liked so much to do theater and I want to do it again because I miss that completely, that experience of, of, uh, of trying to be someone else, like, a, like to be in a character. I realized that on stage you have this area that you could experience whatever you want to experience. So, uh, so yeah, and that's what I like and that's also why I always liked to to be on stage. You were supposed to, of course, participate already last year with Répondez-moi, and this year you're now going with Tout l'univers. First of all, how was it for you to be participant in 2020, and then the whole thing got cancelled? How did that make you feel? Uh, different emotions. First, uh, I couldn't really believe that, because I was waiting for that moment, so I was like, uh, what's happening? It was really a lot of misunderstanding because I thought they had, I mean, they told me that they had several, several possibilities to do it still, like without any audience and just like, uh, you know, so I thought, okay. And then one week after I received that information that for sure it will be done, they called me and they told me, no, so it's not going to be done. It's going to be can canceled. And I was like, okay, okay. Okay, not possible. So I don't have at all the feeling that I, I participated last year for Eurovision. Because for me, what makes Eurovision, it's the life of Eurovision. When you are uh, releasing a song, releasing a video, that's a normal process for every artist. But what's, what makes it different, it's for me, the live with, with uh, this crazy show of four hours uh, and, uh, and with uh, those all... Um, Uh, with this audience, with uh, all of those lights, with those crazy technical uh, effects, uh, with those uh, props, uh, with those uh, LED screen. <laughs> I mean, that firework of color and of technique uh, for me is Eurovision. And that's why I didn't have the feeling that I was in Eurovision last year. I mean, of course, with those interview and those kind of things, of course, but not for real. And when I watched uh, the Eurovision China Light show, I was like, okay, I shouldn't be here with my pajamas watching this. I should be normally in Rotterdam. What the mm, happened? <laughs> Why am I still here in Switzerland? <laughs> and then I, I started to be really frustrated and also really uh, disgusted. I mean, because I was like... Phew. Come on, that's so sad. I really wanted to be there. And now, you know, when people ask me, are you impassioned? Yes, I am, of course, impassioned because the deadline is like coming. But like last week, I was like waiting three minutes. I mean, waiting for three minutes uh, during one year and a half. I can wait more weeks now. I'm used to. <laughs> so when were you told that you were chosen again for this year's Eurovision? Uh, after the cancellation, actually, I discovered that my head of delegation uh, in an interview said that he asked me as quick as possible because he was afraid that I was going to represent another country. <laughs> so uh, he asked me quite soon to come back to Switzerland 
uh, for Switzerland. And of course, I wanted to do it with Switzerland because uh, here in Switzerland, we have talent <laughs> and we have a lot of artists and they need to be uh, seen. And, you know, it's like, I hope, I mean, I cannot compare because he's now, I mean, he's a really big artist. But, for example, you know what happened with Stromae? Uh, mm -hmm. He became so big that then people really interested about Belgium, Bel Bel Belgium music. And, uh, and for me, I would love to have the same effect here because, I mean, uh, after that arrived Loïc, Loïc Noté, Angèle, her brother, who is a big uh, rapper, Isolt, and a lot of other Belgium artists that are becoming really big just because someone had the possibility to say, hey, I'm here, come on and look at what we have. And I hope one day I will have that same effect. And also that's why I'm super happy to represent Switzerland because uh, I really think that there are a lot of people that aren't uh, heard here. So that's why I'm feeling quite happy to try to make that here. And Switzerland, being a country with four official languages, you are French Swiss, you have Kosovo Albanian and Albanian background. What, what does it mean to you to be a Swiss with all of this mixed background representing Switzerland? I mean, it's important also because uh, in Switzerland, we have a lot of people that, immig uh, that they immigrate here like my family. First, Switzerland has four national languages. I mean, at the big, in the beginning, Switzerland is an multicolor, a multicultural country, uh, but still even more now because we have a lot of Portuguese people here, a lot of uh, Albanian people here, Italian. So, I mean, uh, there are even more languages. And for me, it's cool to represent that also because... Um, in some places of Switzerland, there are still people that aren't open at all, that uh, we can say even that uh, they are racist. So uh, I really want also to see and to show to them that we are people and open uh, people and we want, to, uh, we want to build a great Switzerland because um, we have all the potential to do that. And, uh, and as I said, I just wish I will... I will make that connection between uh, people of every culture here. Um, let's talk about the song, uh, Tout l'univers. When, when I saw the music video, it was so stunning. And I thought, wow, they are really in it to win it this year. <laughs> Especially also because you have uh, Wouter Hardy on the songwriting team, who was one of the co-writers for Arcade, for Duncan. So tell us about the song. What does it mean to you and, and how did it come up? So um, after the cancellation, uh, I discussed with uh, the head of delegation and I said that I will come just if I can compose my song. He said, that's what we want. So come. First camp, we had that idea that wasn't my idea, but they wanted to make as much a song as uh, it was possible. So uh, we had two camp at the same time. So I had like two studios and I had to go from one to the other, to the other, to the other and composing two songs at the same time. Um, and I know that there are a lot of artists that can do that. But for me, I mean, it's so important to compose a song that I cannot like make it. OK, let's just like buy some bread and like, you know, but I mean, it's I, maybe when I will get bored of like taking hours for two notes and making like uh, maybe I will tr I will try to work like this. But. Anyway, I mean, I send a lot of references, what I wanted, like wh who inspires me, what direction I want to go, also some top lines, some of those things. And then um, I first worked with Alios because I worked with them with Répondez-moi and with a, a producer uh, who is from Poland, uh, Miki Tribulec. And, uh, and like uh, then I went uh, to the other studio and they were quite really advanced in the process and i was like and i listened to the song and i was like wow okay you so understand me i mean we had filmed that reaction uh, so uh, i'm sure they were gonna broadcast that <laughs> yeah i mean i was so shocked that they understood me so well 
and in a so short amount of time because we met i mean the first day we i mean the day we met was in the studio so i mean we didn't know each other since uh, i mean before so um it was a crazy connection we had be between us and uh, and so that's why we wrote first the ground zero so an english song i mean i like the fact that there was a quite cool effect with my voice to be to, i mean to do but still for me um I had the feeling that I could interpret it more and better in French, so that's why I wanted to have a French lyric, and so that's why I contacted the writer of Alios, and so I could have a part of last year, this year, and for me it was important. And so this song speaks about, um, I mean, as I said, it's a, for me it's more a feeling song. It speaks about an explosion. Ground Zero is the middle of an explosion, and especially the 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 signification of the of that word lifted up with the, the 11th the 11th of uh, September 2001 this expression doesn't exist in french so that's why for me it was ex important to uh, explain that in french uh, and uh, so that's why i wanted to speak about that effect of having an explosion on you an impact thing and you have two reactions you give up or you fight against that and you're and you're saying okay everything is destroyed now but it's maybe an occasion now to rebuild it and to try to rebuild it better and uh, for me so that's like cycle that's the cycle of life so that's why I wanted to have it visually we have a cycle in the video clip because we start the video where it ends uh, also uh, we I really wanted to have that impact point that explosion, that's why there is a car crash. And why a car crash? Because I had a crazy experiences with car and once I was with my best friend uh, coming back from vacation and my car started to burn uh, on the highway. So uh, yeah, so I was like, I, I had just, I have been so lucky because it was uh, going up and I just had the possibility to stop at the last moment to a gas station uh, I mean, not, not uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. because, and he told me a hundred times, like the man from the gas station, thank you for not stopping you there. I'm, uh, we are, uh, we were safe both with my best friend and, uh, and uh, I mean, that's why I wanted to speak about the car crash. And I think it's something so common, the fact that I'm helping myself to go out from that car because we have that power inside of us to fight against that explosion. And I was just like thinking about, okay, now you cannot do whatever you want because like there is that explosion, but you have two possibility or you give up and you're not living your life or you wake up and you say, okay, I cannot do this to, uh, today because I, I need to stay at home, but tomorrow I will do this because I can do that. I mean, it wasn't for Corona. This song wasn't written for Corona. But it's just like I can clearly see the link, and uh, it maybe inspired us unconsciously. And uh, and yeah. if we talk about Switzerland in Eurovision, uh, Switzerland was of course one of the founding countries back in 1956. Won the first contest and also won contest number 33 with Celine Dion, which is now 33 years ago. Being one of the favorites this year. What would it mean to you to follow in the footsteps in the footsteps of of those two Eurovision legends, Liz oh and, and Celine Dion, if you could win it? I mean, I cannot compare it because uh, I mean, Celine Dion is the queen, so <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> but uh, I really wish I really I'm really wishing to myself, of course, the same destiny to have that possibility to go. Uh, as far as they go, as yeah, as they go. For me, Eurovision is a really crazy experience that I'm going to uh, that I'm going to leave. But honestly, the most important thing is what what is coming after uh, my album and those things. So uh, people will uh, connect to me with my music, uh, yeah, and those things. I mean, that would be a, a beautiful revenge to me because I never won anything. I did all of this show, but I never won anything. And I know that maybe, I mean, I'm so happy that I don't win all of those things because that um, it's, it's that statement that made me uh, continue working, 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 working and not like saying, 
hey, I won. So <laughs> no, let's just no. You know, I never, I never won anything. And I did a lot of not just TV shows, but also you know, like little contests here when I was younger. As I said, yeah, I never won it. So for me, it will be a beautiful revenge to say I never won anything when I was younger, and it made me work so much that now the most important thing to win, I win it. You know. Uh, that would be a beautiful revenge, but I mean, the most important thing for me is to be in the f first five. It means that you have a quality and you did something with quality. I mean, you can finish, I mean, at the 10th place and you never know. It's like, I mean, in, in, in France, there are so many singers that they never won a show and uh, they finished at the semifinals, for example, and then they, meet, they made a much more bigger career than the one who win. Uh, who won for me when you are in the top five it means that you have a certain quality that it's like that it has been seen by the people when if you are the first one or the third one honestly i'm saying really with uh, a honest mind uh for me it's not so important because sometimes uh you can have a really good quality but it's just like you're not in a taste of the, the audience because you can make for example i mean imagine if France does beautiful and a beautiful uh, performance and Italy does a beautiful performance same high as quality between a slow song and a rock song you know I mean there are some things that you know like for example you know that uh, it will touch more people when it's like when it's starting to get emotional I mean there are so many aspects that it's so if you are the first one or the third one as I said it's, it's not really important, but it means like what you did is a quality thing. I'm not trying to get into uh, a format. I just propose my song that I wrote with Walter and Nina. And, uh, and like, it, it's so important for me just to show who I am. And if people put me at the last place, I will try, I will continue to make who I am. But it's just like if they put me between the first and the fifth place, it will, it will say, hey, we heard you, what you did in those three minutes, because we also have to remind that it's just three minutes. When you're making a concert, sometimes you did a song well, and then the other one you, did sh uh, you, you, you destroyed it because you weren't uh, good, in a good mood for that song. And then, and, but you have one hour to show who you are. And that's why it's always cool to see artists in live. In a TV show, when you have three minutes, it's like just crazy because it means that two, more than 200 million people will, will say that those three minutes are you. That's why it's a crazy exercise. But for me, it's an exercise that I, that I love to do because for me, it's a, it's a, it's a personal challenge. And, uh, and uh, challenging myself is so, I mean, it's an adrenaline. It's something I love. And, uh, and yeah. There are 39 countries in this year's Eurovision. If you couldn't choose your own song, which other songs would you say are your favorites? My top five is, I think, uh, Angela Peristeri with Karma, of course. <laughs> Discotheque from The Root, I love that song. Uh, Daddy Freya, uh, I mean, I love his personality and uh, yeah, he's just completely, uh, I mean, and I mean, he's a real talent and in a producing way. I mean, he's a crazy producer and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really a big fan of his work. Also Friends, because I think it's a, it's a cool, uh, really cool uh, song. I love also Roxanne, the song Amnesia. I really think it's going to be a big surprise because for me it was underrated. I mean, from the bookmakers and like those kind of things, because uh, of course when I watched it, I saw that uh, she, yeah, I, I saw the other contestant and I was like, no, she deserves better. And I'm sure that she's gonna surprise everyone, and I'm super excited to meet her. Last question today: Is there anything you want to say to our viewers out there? Thank you for your support. Uh, it's really, um, how can I say that? It's really uh, important for me because, you know, especially when I'm doubting, when I'm uh, having those moments, I always receiving so much love uh, in real, but also in uh, Insta messages. So it's really important that 
for I mean that is really important for me. It makes me believe that what I'm doing is uh, is good. <laughs> so thank you and uh, stay safe and uh, and yeah and stay healthy and take care of yourself. That's the most important thing. Take care of yourself because nobody will do it for you. Tulu Nivea, this is Swiss entry for your recent song contest. We will see and hear you right before Denmark in semi-final two on May the 20th. John Senko, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks to you and thanks to you for your for your listening. It was a pleasure.